Welcome to day two of AirVenture 2010. It's been as busy as the first with lots of new stories breaking. First up is the story of the Dragonfly, a rocket-powered helicopter. Rocket-powered! And we'll see it flying later in the week. Well, hopefully. Aspen Avionics, meanwhile, launched their synthetic vision technology for their glass cockpits so you can sort of see the ground even when you can't. And finally, from flight design, who always come to these shows with lots of new aircraft, they've launched a retrofit kit for the CTLS, so you can add floats to your light sport aircraft. So what's coming up on the show today? We're going to look at the Omer's Hood Skycar, a sort of S-Class Mercedes with wings. Next up, Dave Rawlings talks to one of the ice pilots, flying DC-3s. But first, we look at the latest from Unique. It's time to give Richard a wake-up call. <gasps> oh, hello, Loop fans. Sorry. Having a bit of an electric dream there. It's hot here, you know, the heat comes to me. So, anyway, this time last year, of course, the star of the show was the unique E430, the electric aircraft from China. Now, since then, they've made really rapid progress. You think, of course, they'd be happy with that. No. Come to Oshkosh 2010, and what have they got for us? Another brand new aircraft, electric motor glider called the Viva. It's an existing design that they've taken over and it's pretty damn beautiful to be honest. Who better to tell us about it than Clive Coote, the boss of Unique? Um, during the progress of the E430, we've obviously been talking to a lot of people and uh, we um, ended up talking to a gentleman called Martin Vetzel of Vetzel Flutesloik Technique. Martin had the Viva design and the production was a little stalled and so we came to a bit of a deal where we've bought the rights to the Viva and another aircraft, a pure glider of his, called the Apis-2, and we will produce those in Shanghai. The, um, the engine is right at the very front, obviously being very small, it sits right very close up to the nose counting, and behind that on the Viva, we actually put the battery. Now clearly a good glider pilot can fly for as long as his skills allow him, but let's say I'm a really bad one, and I just want to use the engine, how long can I go flying for? The, on pure engine power, about an hour and a half. You know, treating it with a climb out and then staying on cruise, off and on a bit of going. It's about an hour and a half duration. How about the purchase cost and, of course, the all important, how much does it cost to recharge? Purchase cost on the Viva, which is a carbon composite aircraft, is going to be $9,000 in the US. And that will be complete with batteries, charger, as a ready to rock unit. When you're talking flying, a uh, recharge is about between two and a half, three dollars. Um, but the big cost is the people understanding about electric. And what you have to consider is that when you, the batteries are included, so effectively you're buying your fuel up front. And the other advantage with electric is obviously maintenance. With an electric engine, you only have two moving parts, which are the ball bearings. They're very easy to change, so that's another positive. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Thanks, Clive. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, Rich. It's clear that Unique are making sparks fly. Now, where's Dave Rawlings got to? Hi, can you guess where I am? That's right, I'm in the cockpit of a DC-3. This one belongs to Buffalo Airways, one of the many that flew in to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the DC-3. We spoke to one of its pilots, Sean Barry, who's also the star of TV's Ice Pilots. Buffalo Airways is here in Oshkosh because of the 75th anniversary of the DC-3. It's a great opportunity for us to be here. It's great for, for us to have a DC-3 here, you know. We work with it every day. And we're glad to have it here. So what does this actual aircraft get used to do? This particular aircraft basically flies passengers back and forth every day. But you can also charter a DC-3. We bring hockey players around, soccer players, anything like that. Or we can take the DC-3s up the Mackenzie Valley to remote communities to deliver them food. That's what those areas need. They, they don't have roads. They don't have any way of supply other than air. So that's what we do for them. So considering all the other ones here are vintage and don't get flown very often, how do you think this compares? We flew this airplane 11 hours to get here. I'd say most of the airplanes that are here probably don't even fly that much a year. This airplane is what we use. This is what we use in the north. So as it's getting older though, it must be more and more difficult to keep them airborne. It's not too difficult to keep our DC-3 airborne because Joe owns so many parts. As long as the guys that maintain them are sticking around to help us out, we'll keep the airplane flying. So that's why Joe's brother's here, Ronnie. Rod's back in Yellowknife running the show. Joe's teaching his sons and brothers to keep the old airplanes flying and keep it going. So what's she like to fly? Great airplane to fly, very forgiving. I've flown this airplane at minus 45 while jets sit on the ramp and can't do anything. Like the, it's, it's amazing what these airplanes can do. It's a large tail dragger. You have to get used to that. You have to know how to wheel land it, land it properly, and 
control it properly. It's got a big rudder, it's got a lot of controllability. So it's very good in crosswinds actually. Thank you very much. No problem. Home of Sud. No, it's not some kind of washing powder, it's an Italian aerospace manufacturer. Very well known for making things for Boeings, vertical fins and undercarriage and stuff like that. But now they've made their first general aviation aircraft, the Home of Sud Skycar. We're going to talk to the boss. This is a very unusual aircraft. Uh, why did you build it? But the possibility of this aircraft is to work like a multi-purpose aircraft. It's a new design because it's the only way to have a, a rear door is to have a two-tailed boom. So the shape, the design of the aircraft is a very unusual. It's a very innovative also for the avionics because it's an all glass cockpit and there is a 3D synthetic vision multifunction display. All the main systems are double in this aircraft and there is autopilot of Megadeth that is a, a, of a superior class related to the aircraft. You've used many automotive ideas inside the aeroplane. There are a lot of uh, uh, study we have done since the beginning with the software for the layout, uh, internal layout of the aircraft uh, that we have taken from the automotive sector because in the aerospace field there are not this uh, type of uh, software and uh, we have studied the cockpit uh, so the pilot uh, must uh, fly in a very comfortable, comfortable way, uh, don't uh, need to turn uh, the neck more than 16 degrees, they don't make effort uh, with the arm more than 20 kilos. Uh, and this is a very innovative way to build an aircraft. So this is going to be the limousine of the sky. This aircraft is going to be made in Italy or, or where? This aircraft is uh, totally designed 100% in Italy. We have designed also the interiors. It's made in Italy and the style of Italy. We have designed uh, also the landing gear and uh, has been assembled for the first time in Italy, but we have a second assembly line in Opaloca, close to Miami, where uh, the aircraft uh, that when be sold in the uh, United States will be maintained uh, in center of assistance after sales because uh, it's not only important to sell the aircraft, it's more important to assist the client of the aircraft to make maintenance of the aircraft. That's it for another hot, clammy day here at Oshkosh. We'll be back tomorrow with some more news. Don't forget, if there's something you'd like us to cover, send us an email, tv at loop.aero, and we'll do our best to find it. See you tomorrow. Toodle pip.